All right, you guys, we're going to go ahead and uh, get the bearing on the second shaft. I believe it goes on in this direction here. I don't know if you can see it very well. Anyway, go ahead and get that in place. Bearing going on the shaft here. This is the input shaft. It's the clutch shaft or the input shaft from the crank to the transmission. And then the other shaft was from the one side of the transmission, the crank side, to the output side, to the rear end, of course. It's all lined up. And I think we're good to go. And that's all the way home. All right. So, there you go, bearing on the shaft. All right, hopefully you guys can see this. I'm gonna go ahead and assemble the shaft. So again, another splined shim for the lash. And again, let me get my snap ring pliers out here so I can get that started. There it goes, all right. Now we can just slide it down. Just making sure it's all the way in. Pretty good. All right. Not that that didn't take forever. <laughs> okay. shaft on here for a bit of a test fit. And there we go. First gear, neutral, second gear, third, fourth gear, third I think, fourth, okay, all right, I'm going to go ahead and tighten down the uh, shift drum bolts and then bang, uh, bend the retainers. Just doing these by feel. Done this enough that I'm pretty confident I'm getting the proper amount of torque. That's one. Let's get the next one here. Okay.
that's two. So those are locked in place. Just make sure they move freely, which they do. Go ahead and uh, drop the gears back in place. Make sure the shift forks engage. And they do. Lube up the seal so the uh, seal holds or slides into place seats properly. That would be the seal for the push rod for the clutch. And this one here is the seal for the output shaft and this is the seal on the sprocket side. Again making sure the shift forks in place. shifts. That's first gear. Second gear. Third gear. And finally fourth gear. And everything works smoothly. No problems. And shift it back down to first gear here. And that's first gear back to neutral. And that's neutral. All right, we've got the case all sorted out. Drop the crank in. That was a real quick operation. I didn't think you guys cared about that. Um, basically, just uh, made sure all the oil passages were lined up and the retaining uh, pins. So, uh, yeah, make sure you guys can see. So now what I'm going to do is go ahead and uh, put in some of the liquid gasket and seal up the case. I don't really have to worry about this area here because this goes into where the clutch basket is and that's all a wet area of the motor. So basically I'm going to be sealing around this edge here. So all I want to do is put a nice thin seal, a thin layer. I'm going to give it a few seconds to um, set up then I'm going to drop the case on. Uh, you don't need a lot of this. You don't want a lot of it squeezing into the motor because there's a lot of little passages in here for oil. Uh, so if you get any in there and it just blobs and then comes off and gets caught in one of those oil passages uh, Typically I've seen it around the cam where it gets caught when it gets drawn up into the cam Or even in uh, a couple of the bearing areas here. There's a couple small holes that will block up the bearings um, These bushings on either end of the shafts those will dry up and burn so uh, You want to be very sparing with this stuff Maybe not quite that sparingly. The other thing you could do is just kind of run your finger along. That's probably a little too much right there. I'm just going to smooth it out to the outer edge a little bit. But I still want somewhat of a ridge in case there's any uneven surfaces in the gasket area here. So again, just uh, you know, make sure you have enough, but it's not going to squeeze inside. You'll get a little bit of squeeze out, but that should hold on. A little more here in the corner. Seal. You don't want anything around the seal. The seal's rubber. It'll seal up that uh, circular area, so you don't need any in there. So like I said, just building up a little bit of a ridge. Make sure it's pretty well seated in there. If there's too much, you can just kind of work it off with your finger. There's an oil seal right there, or an oil passageway, so a very sparing amount in this area here. Again, this is the side where the chain is, so this is definitely sealed to the outside world, if you will. Um, only up to here, because this area is in an oil bath, actually. So this gasket surface here actually seals up, so you don't need to seal around the crank, per se. Uh, but you will seal in this area over here. So 
So I got a little bit more than I want in that area just because there's an oil seal right there. So I'm just going to work it away from that and build it up along the edge there. So that looks pretty good. And I'm just going to come along here and seal out to this outer edge. That should be enough. I got a little bit of ridge. I'm putting a little more in this corner here because that's where the gaskets meet. So I wanted to have a little bit of extra material there to squeeze out. Work this way around. <clears throat> Again, this whole area here is all in an oil bath. There's actually a seal here for the starter or the starter block off plate. Uh, so really you're just kind of getting into this area here along this web. So I'll do something like this. A little around that surface there. Kind of hard to get into this area because the crank is in the way. So I'm just going to put a little bit extra right there. And just kind of work it out with the tip. Got a screwdriver here, I can get rid of some of the excess and kind of smooth it out. And again, this is the clutch area. So the gasket ends basically right here. So I am not going in towards the crank. I'm just gonna work out to the edge where the gasket surfaces meet. I'll just taper that out a little bit, feather it out so it uh, covers the entire area. And then again, I'm just gonna go back over and kind of smooth it down, make sure I don't have too many high areas. I'm not pressing on it hard. I'm just running my finger over it. And you can feel when it's you've got highs and lows. So again, uh, making sure you don't have any kind of going in towards the crank, uh, crank web area. So I'm actually kind of tapering that or beveling the surface of the gasket material towards the crank web there with my pinky. Again, drawing it out. Now my hands are a mess. So I'm going to do the famous clean my hands with the brake cleaner. The highly recommended procedure. So I won't show you this procedure, but you can hear it in the background. I'm not spraying brake cleaner on a rag, and I'm definitely not wiping my hands down with it to clean up my hands with this gasket material. I would never do something like that. Just double check that I'm happy with where I got all of my gasket material. Um, looks pretty good. I could probably put a little bit in this area here. Uh, just to make sure it seals on that end. And I'm going to run it out. That all looks good there. I got a good bead running all the way around this side. Again, this area here is all open to the internal parts of the engine. It's got oil in it, so it's going to circulate, so you don't really need anything there. So I'm going to go ahead and join the cases. Already tested all the transmission. Everything's rotating freely. The crank is in place. Um, anything internal to the motor has been tightened, um, all the pins are in place, all the studs are in place. So we will go ahead and close this up. And again, it should go on pretty straight and easy here. There it goes. So that is the case down. Now I want to actually give it a few minutes here before I tighten everything up just for the gasket material to set up a little bit more. And then what we'll do is we'll start with the larger bolts first and then work our way down to the smaller ones.
All right, I'll bring you back when I'm ready to tighten it down.